you know, I, I can't really articulate how much that he's meant to our organization, um, to myself personally. Um, um, you know, he and Renee, you know, in the community, obviously Joe's you know, performance on the court, um, but just his, his presence and the people he touched, um, the things that he did on the court, but as much as anything, the things that he did, you know, for the fabric of our organization. And, uh, you know, personally, I'll always um, be grateful to him for all that. And um, appreciate Joe and Renee and his family and everything they've done. Mm -hmm. There's the, they've been elite defensively even without Draymond. Yeah. Uh, what what are they doing in other regards to make them so good defensively? Well, they're committed. Um, that, that that's the first thing. And when you know they're committed to to their aggressiveness, their shifts. You know, they play every facet. You know, of a defensive possession. You know, they're they're aggressive in their pressure on the ball. They're aggressive in their help. They're aggressive in their rotations. Uh, when they recover, um, they defensive rebound. You know, I think, you know, those things coupled with, you know, athleticism um, and length. You know, Wiggins is 6'8 and long. You know, Peyton's quickness and his ability to get into people, the guys to come off the bench. You know, Steph doesn't get enough credit for what he does defensively. He works, he works his ass off defensively. And so it's it's their whole um their whole team. Um it's like as I said, committed to guarding and um and I think their anticipation would be another thing that their ability to you know to turn people over, which is obviously something that's gonna be important for us to you know, to be efficient tonight and not allow that to happen. What is the skill set difference between offensive and defensive rebounds? <laughs> um, I didn't mention Looney, who I think also is, you know, a, a really, you know, important player in their pick and roll defense. His ability to, to play at various levels, you know, on the floor to be up as high as he needs to be, uh, to be able to blitz, to be able to drop back and recover and protect the rim. Um, so his versatility, I think, is also something, um, you know, that makes him really good. Um, the difference between offensive and defensive rebounding, well, first of all, you, when you shoot, that's when you offensive rebound. And when they shoot, you defensive rebound. The skill set, I think, you know, sometimes defensive rebounding has more to do with, you know, finding position um, you know, and, you know, not, not just reading the ball, but reading, you know, who's coming to the rim. Um, if there's people that are crashing the boards, you know, be ready to get contact and react to the ball. Um, you know, I don't have a great answer for you on that. Um, I think offensive rebounding, um, guys just have a kind of a depth perception, maybe a little bit like catching a fly ball where you just kind of anticipate where the ball is going to carry them and are able to pursue it. You know, and I think, you know, obviously, you know, height and athleticism and quickness, um, you know, are things that are important in both, but um, you, you've seen, you know, excellent offensive rebounders, that, that are that really just because of a commitment. I mean, there's some guards. I think McConnell had like, we felt like he had 10 of them against us for this year. Beverly's always been a good offensive rebounder. Lowry's been a good. So my point is that you don't have to necessarily be big. Um, you know, it's something that I think Mike has done well for us and Trent too. Have you had the chance to watch Alexander Wong? What do you think of the game? Yeah, well, you know, obviously, um familiar with him and and you know that I know you know Justin Danny the guys in the front office you know obviously spent a ton of time watching film and watching him um I have as well um but more him playing you know as he's played against I, I think you know we're 
I, I think his length, um, you know, his ability to, to make a shot, you know, th there's a skill set there that he, he has some tools. Um, the emphasis, you know, um, I think, again, is, you know, he can, if he can come in and have an impact offensively, that's something that, you know, that, you know, we're, we're constantly um, telling our whole team, you know, and he does have the, the length and the size to, um, to be a really committed defender. And um, anytime you join a team in the middle of the year, you know, there is a, an acclimation process, you know, where, you know, you've got to get comfortable and um, in, in a lot of ways kind of, um, but de de defensively, I think something that, you know, that um, looking forward to seeing him throw himself into. What's that? We've exchanged the, uh, we've exchanged text messages. He's, he and Juancho, they're both, um, I believe en route. So, you know, we've, we've done that with the anticipation of, um, you know, obviously speaking face to face when he gets here. You mentioned, you mentioned at the beginning, you know, as far as our articulate, everything that's been to the other day you were talking about, you know, this is a business and sometimes business should be tough to make. Even knowing like the practical, the practicality of the situation, expiring contract, out the rest of the year makes sense to get land. Is it so hard to see a guy like that go and, and we're able to have a conversation with him when it happens? I mean, I, I think everybody would, you know, everybody in the organization would, would give you the same answer. That, um, just the same same way Joe feels, and, and yeah, we talked and we just said, you know, I don't really know what to say. I don't think there's um, there's a lot to be said, um, other than some of the things for me and him at least that we've appreciated, you know, in one another before. I mean, I I saw him play, you know, in Moscow, and watched him warm up when he was playing for Barcelona, and he didn't play that night. That was an exhibition game. And then we played him again a couple of times during the year. And then um, the second time we played him, um, they had an injury and he got a lot more minutes and um, he used to tease him and you know, he was afraid to shoot. But you could tell, he, you know, he'd play the right way and move the ball and, um, you know, played for his teammates. And those were all the qualities um, that he brought with him here and that I think, you know, really impacted and helped shape the way you know, that, that we play in the way that I think um, people see us playing. And I know that you know, the way that we appreciate that. Um, so, um, you know, obviously that, that was a tough phone call, but it's also, you know, basketball is what we do. It's not who we are. And I have no doubt that, you know, many of the relationships that, that Joe's had here, and, and I know I can speak specifically for mine, you know, is, are not, this isn't, you know, impacting that, you know, over the long run. What's that? Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, I, I remember, you know, I've always kind of followed, I mean, I think I follow international basketball, you know, um, particularly even when, you know, when Ricky was here and seeing him play in the Spanish national team. And then when he's in Denver is really, um, you know, and size, you know, has, has made shots. You know, I, I, it's hard for me to talk too much about two guys until I get a chance to see him and talk to him and coach him. But I, I can say that, you know, we're, we're uh, looking forward to having those guys as part of the program. So, and I've exchanged texts with him too. <laughs> He's also on his way. Pardon me. I, I have I have absolutely nothing to do with Joe's rehab other than to you know root for him and to get healthy and get back soon.